All right, so I'm going to be extending and concluding my negative analysis of the case issues presented by the affirmative side, and I'll be uh, just covering um, and uh, going in depth on some of my uh, disadvantages of the affirmative side as well. One thing I would like to point out that was brought up by the first affirmative is that the FAFSA, uh, they claim that the FAFSA helps students get scholarships. However, the FAFSA is the government's tool for students to get financial aid, which is different than scholarships. Um, so it, to say that scholarships are important or we can dismiss the fact that the College Board helps students get millions of dollars in aid is to say that we're denying the minorities and the unadvantaged students um, help or uh, which directly counter, counter contradicts the affirmative's claim that it would help minorities and disadvantaged students. So going over some of the uh, negative sides was that the uh, by eliminating the SAT, uh, which is an important benchmark used to grade students. So it allows. So according to an article by Whitman University, it says that because the test is completely standardized, everything is held constant, so that comparisons between students from widely different backgrounds are available. So that important, it's important to have that benchmark so we can compare students from different areas, from different uh, ethnicities, and uh, different ages, and see how they progress. Then you, so by eliminating the SAT, we eliminate this very important benchmark, and the affirmative claims that the, G, the student's GPA would be an effective solution for this. However, I would like to make the point that standardized tests are very objective. So according to the University of Columbia, if they say that standardized tests are objective in nature and that they're often scored by computers or at the very least scored by people who do not directly know the student. So by GPA is administered to the student by their uh, instructors or teachers, so those teachers might be influenced by that student's situation, that student's background, or whatever they have going on in their life to help them with their GPA. So it's more of a subjective grade means of grading the student's ability as opposed to the SAT being very objective. So I'd also like to restate my claim that eliminating the SAT would have a significant impact on the College Board and in the SAT industry and the industry that supports the SAT. We're talking thousands of people and millions and millions of dollars, whether it's 550 or whatever it could be, it's between 500 and $1 billion. And additionally, the SAT also helps teachers know what they need to teach. So it sets a defined standard for what's required of the teachers to teach their students. And also it holds these teachers accountable so when they see that students from a certain school or area are uh, not doing well, um, they can address those issues. So according to the University of Columbia again, they say standardized testing holds teachers and schools accountable. Probably the greatest benefit of testing is that teachers and schools are responsible for teaching students what they're required to know. So in conclusion, my partner and I should win on this debate because of the <laughs> dramatic chemistry, <laughs> um, and the lack of an adequate benchmark to replace the SAT when it's eliminated, and also the benefits that are provided to the students, the teachers, and the parents of these students by having the SAT. <laughs>